Do you find it hard to explain to friends and family what you now do? Are you wasting valuable time by attempting to figure out challenges on your own? We have created a community for ex-corporate people running their own business who want to live a life they love whilst giving back to their community. This is the Build Live Give Show. We bring you first-hand experiences of guests going through many of the struggles you face each and every day. We get real with no corporate BS. And now your host, Paul Higgins. Welcome to the Build Live Give podcast, episode number 16. I'm Paul Higgins and I'm your host for today. And today I'd love to welcome a great guest, Vanessa Bennett from Next Evolution Performance. Unlike many of our guests, Vanessa actually loved corporate, but she constantly saw people around her that weren't. So she wanted to leave and help those people. And she's got a wealth of experience in fitness. And what she does is combine that with her knowledge of neuroscience to really help people and help people understand their energy levels when it's best to work and also help people with the constant overwhelm of working, whether it be in a large corporate or a small business. So a lot of you listeners out here will love what she gives on today's episode. She also talks about some great tools of actually measuring your energy levels, which I found very useful. She talks about the causes that she supports and she really is a great guest. What's been happening in the Build Live Give community continues to grow. So thanks for all those that have left five-star reviews and for those that have subscribed to the podcast. If you haven't left a five-star review, please do. If you haven't subscribed, please do that as well. It really helps to build the community. If you want to find out more about the community, go to buildlivegive.com or you can check out our free Facebook group. It's a closed group, but you can request to join at Build Live Give. So please uh, grab some uh, whether it's pens or paper or however you take notes because Vanessa really does give you a lot of value in this interview so now I'll hand it over to Vanessa. Welcome Vanessa Bennett from Next Evolution Performance to the Build Live Give podcast. We're going to know and find out more about you today but why don't you just start with a bit of your backstory. Thanks, Paul. Great to be here today. So I guess my background is actually financial services. I worked for a long time in financial services, uh, in accounting firms and investment banks and fund managers. And uh, I really made the leap across to my own business uh, about four, a bit over four years ago now. And uh, so I was really seeing a lot of people get burnt out in corporate and I was just finding there was really no reason for that. Um, I was very lucky. I was able to work in the fitness industry at the same time as I was working through my corporate career. And I think that pretty much saved me. <laughs> that actually helped me to be able to manage my energy, um, see the importance of health and fitness in productivity and uh, really helped me not get burnt out. And I realised that most other people don't have access to that kind of information. So that sort of became a bit of a passion of mine and I uh, wanted to help other people do that. And uh, that's why I'm now doing high performance coaching. Excellent. And I know we'll go a little more into that, but your back background or something that your friends or family would know about you other than the uh, fitness side that yes. you'd love to share with our listeners. <laughs> well, I'm not sure that I like to share this, but it, it, it's, a, it's a fact. Um, I'm actually inherently very shy, believe it or not, even though a lot of my work involves presenting and being up in front of people. Uh, I'm actually someone who is inherently very shy. Right. And how have you, like, you know, you've been very successful in sales. And as you said, it's sort of core part of your business. How, how have you sort of come come to deal with, with that or, or thrive, actually, uh, based on... That shyness. Yeah, absolutely. So I think, um, well, one of the things was actually teaching fitness classes. That certainly helped me overcome shyness, and that was where I could be, you know, one 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 person in front of a lot of people, and uh, and help me to overcome that. So that was a great way to get around it, and um, and I think just instead of focusing on myself, focusing on others. And I think when you focus on others, it's a great opportunity to be able to think about more what you can do for others rather than worrying about yourself. I think that's a great point. And often, you know, I spent quite a bit of time in sales as well. And sometimes the shy people, the people that got the structure right, really listened well. And those that had the gift of the gab often uh, overplayed that and their strength yeah. actually turned... Uh, into a weakness so uh, i think that's so true and and you know your 
had a really successful career. What was sort of the big moment for you or was there a big moment where you thought, mm, you know what, I, I think I'm going to go try something myself? Yeah, well, it was interesting. I wasn't necessarily about wanting to try something on my own. I was actually not unhappy in corporate. Um, I was just getting a bit bored with what I was doing um, and it was more of a case of I was getting more and more interested in this concept of coaching people and when I worked out the parts of my job because I was the head of sales when I worked out the parts of my job that I really enjoyed and really got a lot of benefit from it was actually the coaching part and coaching my team and coaching others um, it was less about some of the other things so that was when I went actually I think coaching is what I want to do it was then that I had to work out well how do I do that and it, then it just became this idea of it was better for me to be able to start something up and then uh, go out and do that that way so it wasn't like I went oh I want to start my own thing what am I going to do I was the other way around I was like I want to go into coaching how am I going to do it great and what were some of the fears if you can remember back to that point when what were some mm -hmm. of the fears that you had then I, did, I guess you never really know 100% whether it's going to work. Um, I was 95% sure I was onto something pretty good and 5% absolutely freaked out, which I figured is probably a good percentage. That's not a bad ratio. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Um, but no, I mean, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm, and I guess from coaching, this is what I do, is I'm more inclined to see what's the best that can happen rather than what's the worst that can happen. I sort of am aware of, you know, well, what's what's the worst that can happen. And really for me, the worst that could happen was that I go back to a really high paying corporate job. Well, if that's the worst that can happen, life ain't so bad. So I figured, you know what, it's time for me to take the leap and see if I can look at making something like this as profitable. Because um, I certainly didn't want to have to take too much of a step back in income, if at all. Um, so I wanted to know that if I took a step back, I knew that it was to build something great that would really propel me forward. So I gave myself, I think within, within two years, I'm going to know if that's going to work or not. And, you know, it was that, it was quite an easy decision at that point. So I thought, well, I haven't really got much of a downside. Let's just jump in and, and focus on the upside. Great. And what, in that first two years, what sort of help did you receive to build that business? Yeah, sure. Um, I had um, support of uh, a business coach around me, so that was very handy. Um, and then I had a business partner as well, so that was really good. Um, but other than that, it was really just the belief that we were onto something here. And I think the other support was really actually from all my contacts. So um, I was very, very fortunate in terms of having a really big network in financial services and I was I've always been someone who wants to try to help people as much as possible and I didn't realize how much that came back to serve me when I actually needed that help myself so I would just you know reconnect with all of my with all my contacts and and a lot of people that I'd done business with previously um, and people were absolutely bending over backwards to help me so either to help me with questions that I had in terms of what we're about to offer or point me in the direction of someone who might have um, wanted my services or even just hired me themselves. So I think the support of a really good network around you um, is absolutely crucial. Yeah, I think that's great advice. And uh, so if you walk into an environment where people don't have that background on you, what mm -hmm. do you say to people when someone says, okay, Vanessa, what, what do you do for a living? Uh, how do you yeah. describe that? Yeah, I say I help people achieve more profit or performance with less effort and burnout. Great. And then they say, okay, so what does that mean? What do you yeah. say then? Yep. <laughs> That's right. So basically it's we help you achieve more than you ever thought possible um, and, and it's got to feel easier as part of the process. And then I say, you know, we use a lot of psychological techniques. We use neuroscience um, to basically help you to manage your energy and mindset to help you to achieve more in whatever way that is for you. So we deal with small businesses. Um, we deal with large corporates. Um, so it really depends on what their level of performance and profit is that they want to improve. And then we help to understand what is their vision for success. And then it's our job to actually help them get there. Okay, great. And, uh, and how do you go about monetizing that? How do you make revenue at the moment? 
Yeah, absolutely. So we do a bit of a mix. We have um, one-to-one coaching programs that we run for senior leaders um, or as well as uh, business owners. And we also have workshops that we do for teams and uh, also keynote speaking at conferences. So we do a bit of a mix between all of them. Um, When we go into a business or a corporate, we tend to consult first with what their needs are and then we work out what does the program look like in order to achieve those needs. So every business is different. It's not a cookie cutter approach. It's not just a manual that we're going to work through and get everyone on the same page because everyone is built differently. Everyone is built to function differently. Everyone thinks differently. There is no one size fits all way to get people across to their level of performance that's required. Great. And, and how's that changed over time? So when you first started to now, you know, has mm-hmm. it changed? And in, if it has, how has it changed? No, it hasn't really too much at this stage. Um, I guess maybe um, the, the mix between them can vary from year to year, but that's not necessarily you know, that different from how I started to where I'm at now. Um, and, it, and it really, so in our business, it kind of depends on which you prefer to do. We'll have some coaches that come on board with us who prefer the one-to-one coaching. So they would do mostly that. My, myself, I like a mix between speaking and coaching. Um, so I tend to be evenly split, but that's just because that's where my passion lies. Um, so it really just depends on the person um, in our business as to how they want to structure their time and manage their energy to make sure that they're doing more of what energizes themselves. Great. And you mentioned before having a business partner. Mm-hmm. Is that business partner still, are you still involved in the business together? Yeah, that's right. So yeah, she right. was in the United Kingdom and she's just relocated to New Zealand. Um, so we've just started up the New Zealand business, uh, which is great. My first client last week, so very timely you oh, should ask me about that. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. And, um, yeah, and we've just worked well together right from the start, so that's been really lucky. We're both on the same page uh, philosophically, which is great. Excellent. And because uh, a lot of people, you know, there's a lot of discussion on either side. Yes, you should get a partner. No. What do you mm. see as some of the pros of taking a partner into business? Yeah, um, look, I think the pros are it's a more collaborative approach and one person just can't do everything is really what it comes down to. So if you can, I think you're better, you're better being alone than with the wrong business partner, but I think you're better to be with the right business partner than to be on your own. Yeah, great, great advice, great advice. Mm-hmm. And, and by the sounds of it's working well, so that's that's yes. excellent. Uh, <laughs> As far as finding clients, how do you go about finding clients? Yeah, look, we're really lucky. It's, it's very much referral-based um, in terms of what we do. So we, obviously, the first um, the first year or so was probably a lot of uh, just me tapping into my network down here anyway um, and focusing on those. But as you get in there and you just do a great job for people, then you get more and more referrals within the companies that we go into. We also get repeat business through workshops. So once we start to get into programs which are being run on a regular basis, we then become a permanent fixture of that. And then as they roll those programs out, you know, once a year, twice a year, three times a year, um, we get repeat business out of all of those programs. So, so long as we are continually adding value and continually uh, revising what we're doing to make sure that we are best of breed in terms of all high performance science that's out there that we can help people to implement into a very practical way in the workplace, um, we're very fortunate that those referrals should keep coming. Excellent. And um, I'll firstly ask about some of your clients. So what are some of the key challenges you see some of your clients facing at the moment? Yeah, Uh, our clients uh, are facing the the biggest issue that's happening is, is people have to do more with less resources. And I saw this myself back when I was working in finance in 2007. You know, markets were great. And anytime you wanted extra headcount, it was it was quite easy to get it. Um, 2008 hit and things were a different story. There were headcount freezes. There were people that were being made redundant. You'd be left with one person now doing the work of three. And I don't think that we're really going to look look to going back to what it was like in 2007. So the biggest challenges we have is people basically having to do more with less. People are overworked. People feel like this lack of control that's going on. 
um, with having to juggle everything. So work-wise, um, also uh, at home as well. So there's a lot of people that have, uh, have to juggle things outside of the work, you know, families, friends, all of those kind of things. Um, and people are just feeling really overwhelmed. And naturally, when you start to feel overwhelmed, your, um, your productivity starts to wane. Yeah, I, I can't remember the exact, but I heard again this morning someone mentioned that, you know, what we get in a year is what people got in centuries as far as information. So uh, mm. I totally yeah. agree. You know, you, you just look at any given day and I look across multiple, uh, you know, I just don't have one. I've got multiple sources of incoming information. So um, yeah. I'm assuming that's what you see. Yeah. And, and is it pretty similar no matter what? type and size of business you're in are you seeing similar trends absolutely similar it doesn't really matter uh, where people are in really senior positions in large corporate roles or whether they're starting a small business of one to two people um, the issues are the same there's still more to do than than time to do it in and now we've got more options as well so uh, you know there's technology allowing us to do more things and we, we and I fall into this trap myself there's so many things that I want to get done with the business um, that I really have to make sure that I dedicate a, um, a half day every week to just working on the business rather than actually in the business. And, um, and so it really doesn't matter what level of people you're, you're speaking with, um, you know, it's, it's the same issues and it doesn't matter on the same, indi on, on across industries as well. Um, across industries, same kind of issues. So I've got a lot of work in financial services, but I also have clients um, in very different industries, and it's the same issue for them as well. Yeah, and what are, if you had to give three tips on the best way to to solve the, those issues that um, a lot of people are having? What would they be? Yeah, I think. Um, oh, well, it's there's a lot to go through there. Um, I think for people to try to solve the more with less is that you just have to learn to say no to things. You know, most people just keep taking on and, and taking on and taking on. In actual fact, they don't need to do half of what they think they do. Um, the other thing is people don't do things efficiently. People are trying to still manage time and not manage energy. And I think once people actually learn how to manage energy, things become a whole lot easier in terms of deciding what to say no to, when to do things, how easy things should feel as well. Yeah, can you give me give me give uh, listeners an example? So, what would be an example of managing energy over time? Yeah, so we use a tool called Personal Pace, and um, and some people have short attention spans, some people have longer attention spans, and if you try to work, because every brain's created differently, and the average attention span is about forty to forty five minutes, but that's made up of people with long attention spans as well as short. Now, if you're a short attention span person and you try to focus for an hour and a half at a time, that's ridiculous. You'll just burn through energy, okay? Likewise, if you're someone who wants to sit down and focus for an hour and a half at a time, if you're constantly interrupted, again, it's going to frustrate you and burn through energy. So one of the tools that we use is how to help people work actually with their focus times and not against their focus times. And how do they control what they can control in an environment to enable them to do more of that. That's just one of the tools. Excellent. And look, we'll uh, put that in the show notes. And it was personal, is it case? Uh, C -A -S -E? uh, no, personal pace, P-A-C-E. Excellent. Great. And the third thing? I know you've covered some great things on those two, maybe it, but if you've got a third? Yeah. So um, I think uh, having the right mindset as well. A lot of people feel guilty um, about not doing things whereas they actually need to celebrate more about what they have done and be more comfortable with uh with being really present with whatever they're doing at the time we get so many people who when they're at home they feel like they should be at work when they're at home mm -hmm. they feel like it should be you know work should be should be at home etc cetera, etc cetera. and i think helping people to manage their energy so that they feel really present with whatever they're doing to make sure that um that whatever they're doing is quality time not quantity yeah, look, I think that's great. And, it, and it's brilliant having someone like yourself um, on the podcast because I think a lot of people listening to this probably think, well, it's just me. But I think uh, mm. what you're highlighting is that it's no matter what role you're in, what level, 
uh, of business you're in, it, it's happening to everyone. So it's, yeah. it's real and it's present and, and it's great that people like yourself. And I think, you know, you mentioned getting a business coach when you first started. I think it's so important to get, uh, whether it's a business coach or get into a mastermind where people can actually uh, uh, help. So uh, that's fantastic. And for you yourself, mm. you know, what are some of the challenges that you find in growing this uh, great business? Mm -hmm. uh, so many ideas, so little time. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably the key one for me. It's actually prioritising. We've got so many great things that, you know, we can help people with and so many different ways that we can help people, different mediums and things like that. Um, it's actually building all of these. And I think, um, you know, so that's one of them. It's just redirecting the energies in the right place at the right time and being comfortable with the fact that it doesn't all have to be done yesterday and this is a journey and that's okay. <laughs> Great. And how do you go about uh, prioritising? What's your tips on prioritising? Yeah, so I always look at best results for least effort, funnily enough, because that's my whole job. But, <laughs> yeah. but I always look for, okay, what, what kind of results do I think I can get from certain initiatives? And then what's the effort involved in doing that? And both that is from an, from an energy point of view, from my side of things, but also from a, from a revenue versus cost point of view as well. Great. And I'm sure your fitness background... Uh, would work in nicely there i'm assuming well i'm i shouldn't assume i'll ask you is a lot of the things <laughs> that you do in the fitness industry do they also carry across into the to the business world yeah very much so and i think that was that was why i was so lucky when i worked in corporate that um i didn't get burnt out for that reason you know i was very good at managing my energy um i was very good at knowing the brain body connection so how how you eat and how you move affects the way that your brain functions and you know for probably sort of 20 years ago when I started teaching classes we didn't have all this neuroscience we knew it intuitively but we didn't have all the neuroscience to back it up and now we do have that neuroscience which is fantastic so we can actually say hey here's the science behind why you should move eat right da 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 um, and so very much you know we make sure that um, our clients understand the neuroscience of how the brain functions so that they can do a lot more a lot easily when you know what kind of tasks you should be doing standing up versus what kind of tasks you should be doing sitting down um, or how the subconscious brain works so that in terms of when how you put a presentation together if you need to um, you know once you know all of that you can literally add hours into your day. So I'm pretty confident that I get through more in four hours than what most people would do in a day. So for me to do a day's work, I'm pretty comfortable that I'm getting through, you know, equivalent to at least another four hours um, of what other people would have to do to, to get through that, probably even double. That's great. And look, I must admit, when I left corporate, I'd always been in my own personal development but i did a course called five choices which was by franklin covey and they basically got the mm -hmm. best neuroscientists in the world and went through a, a um and i was a trainer for them and it was just I, I couldn't believe that i'd spent 20 years working and never actually understood neuroscience and how my brain worked you know yes i'd done personality type tests but hadn't taken it any further than that so look i i fully endorse what you say and, and i've got a chronic disease which means that i just can't work the um, the volume of hours that i used to so right, it's yep. really um important for me from a, a total health perspective to look after my my body but often your mind is uh, mm. something that um you know people leave at the door when they go into the gym as, a, as an analogy so um yeah look i i, I uh i think uh, i think you're dead right and also we'll, we'll make sure that people uh, get the opportunity to find more about what you're doing because I think it's a, uh, it's a great area. So if we sort of move on now into your typical week or your uh, typical day, just give me a, a sense of what that looks like. Yeah, so I because I need to I need to factor in teaching classes as well. I need to be fairly regular in terms of the classes that I teach. So I try to stay based in Sydney on Mondays and Tuesdays, so that I can teach my classes and I work around those. So I typically try to get up and work from home, doing some coaching phone calls first, so that I only have to have one costume change into my gym gear. 
Yeah. And then I go into the city to teach and then I stay in the city at work and jump into my suit after I teach and, uh, and do all my face-to-face meetings. And uh, then I jump back into gym gear, teach another class and uh, go home and, and collapse very and sleep very well. Um, <laughs> so typically my Mondays and Tuesdays are in Sydney doing a lot of coaching clients and any sort of business development work or um, face-to-face meetings that I need to have um, in that time. It could also be workshops that are Sydney based um, that I try to get on those days but typically my coaching clients um, happen more so in the start of the week and then at the back end of the week um, I don't teach classes regularly um, Wednesday to Friday I teach classes again on Saturday morning um, so that means that when I've got interstate workshops and road shows and things like that I tend to do more of that travel down the back end of the week so it depends on the week I don't sort of have a typical day in terms of how I operate all the time it depends on workshops and roadshows. Um, but when I'm in Sydney, I do try to work from home so I avoid the morning commute because that saves a lot of energy and time as well. Um, and then I go into the city about lunchtime and do my exercise in there and and uh, and then stay in the city for the afternoon and then try to, again, avoid rush hour um, so that I can save my time and energy <laughs> and, uh, and do that. So it tends to work quite well. Great. And look, we've had quite a few guests that have uh, had finance industry experience um, and I always ask this question how, how different would that look than if you worked in finance today like how how different does that week look versus what what it would be if you're still in finance uh, well, I have to be in a suit right from the get-go of a day. <laughs> That's probably uh, one of my biggest energy drains when I worked in finance. Um, in fairness, because I was actually pretty good at managing my energy, I actually tried to keep things fairly much the way that I wanted to run things. So I'm not really a morning person, so I didn't really used to get into the office before nine. Um, I would prefer to stay a little bit later. I could teach a class and then come back or teach a class later after work if I was teaching then. Um, or I prefer to teach at lunchtime. That's my that's my best time. Um, and, yeah, so it, it, it's different. But for me, I actually didn't mind working in corporate. So I'm probably a little bit different. I didn't leave corporate because I hated corporate. Um, if anything, I had to look at, well, how is I going to – manage my new role and make it look like all the bits that I liked about corporate. So I actually really like working with other people. I really like working in the city. Um, I really like having clients and and all that kind of stuff. So um, I needed to sort of try to replicate more of that. So I think um, sort of from the way, you know, I I see my clients work and everything, um, people have got more control in corporate than they think that they do. So I, I wouldn't encourage people to necessarily jump from corporate just because they hate corporate um i would encourage them to if they're going to jump from corporate do it because they've got something that they desperately want to do that's just a different thing that's going to be more energizing for them yeah i think that's Um, i think that's great and and what i was uh, a wise person once said to me make sure you're running to something not running from something so i think that echoes uh, your your great advice um so look the next section i'd love to ask you about and i know in the pre-chat we uh, talked about it is the causes that you support so Mm -hmm. um tell us tell uh, the blg listeners a little bit about that yeah for sure so um i'm really into um well people supporting causes that are that are close to their heart so uh i guess for me it's uh the garvin institute uh, having had friends with uh, breast cancer and other bits and pieces, that's always a good one for, for me to like to support. And uh, also from a mental health point of view, um, I've seen so many people, especially in corporate, and that kind of comes down to what I, why I do what I do now. Depression, anxiety, all of these kind of mental issues are becoming more and more talked about, but they are, they are becoming amazingly prevalent almost to the point where I just assume my clients have had anxiety or depression or, or having it now until they tell me otherwise. So it's, it's becoming, you know, the stats are really high. Um, the stats are obviously one in three of the total population, but that includes everybody. So if you look at people who are in corporates or running businesses, I'd say the stats, they go, it would, I don't know what the research is, but it feels like it's up around 70%. Um, so I think anything that we can do to get behind causes like the Black Dog Institute, Beyond Blue, Are You OK, all of these kind of causes, anything that people can do for that is definitely a worthwhile cause as well. 
Yeah, that's excellent. And we've actually got a couple of members in our club that are uh, got some great uh, apps and uh, some artificial intelligence that's certainly going to help in this space. So uh, the great news is I think there's a lot of solutions coming, but, uh, you know, unfortunately, um, you know, it's not addressing the, the core reason uh, why um, it's yeah. happening in the first place. But, um, mm. yeah, and, and some of the work you're doing obviously uh, helps prevent that as well. Definitely. The, the um and I'll put all the links to uh, to those great causes in the show notes. So as far as um, the last section is around uh, sort of giving actionable advice for our listeners, and I've got to say you've given lots of actionable advice already, but these questions are a little more specific. And I'm really keen to get your answer on this one, given what you said before around energy and doing more and four or five hours than most people do in a day. Uh, you know, what's your number one personal productivity tip? Learn how to say no. I know that sounds really straightforward, but in practice, it's a lot harder. <laughs> and if people learn how to say no, um, it helps them to actually manage the activities that they're working on and making sure that they're directing their energies in the right way. Excellent. And your apps, so what are some of the your favourite apps that sit on your home screen on your phone? Interestingly enough, um, not that much to do with I guess, but <laughs> Google Maps is actually my favourite. It helps me to get places as quickly, as efficiently as possible, which is great, yes. um, you know, between meetings and things like that. Um, interestingly enough, I know it sounds crazy from a, from a effectively high performance and productivity is a big part of what we do in there. Um, I think I, I see a lot of people get more stressed by trying to use apps than I do actually getting the outcomes from using them. Um, for me to manage myself, I think if you've got a calendar, and if you actually schedule your to-do list at the right time and the right amount of time and energy to put onto each of those tasks, I reckon that's actually one of your best productivity tools that you can ever have. So to be honest, I'm not a big fan of all these so-called productivity apps. Some people use them and, and they're fantastic and they don't go really well with those and I encourage them to continue using them if they work for them. But for me, you know, just to have my to-do list and have it scheduled, uh, that's the biggest tip that I can recommend for a lot of people. So if you're using your calendar properly, um, that should be a great app right there. Okay, great. And uh, podcasts, um, what's your favourite podcast? If you listen to podcasts, if you don't, uh, books. But if you do listen to podcasts, what are some of your favourite podcasts? Yeah, I actually don't listen to too many podcasts, believe it or not. Um, I actually like to read books. So I find that when I get on a plane for work or something like that, my little guilty pleasure is to just actually just enjoy a book. Um, and so books for me are all around. Um, I do a lot of reading around psychology, a lot of reading around neuroscience. A great book that I'm reading at the moment is called The Buddha's Brain. And it's actually a great way in layman's terms. I've read quite a few books that are definitely not layman's terms. Um, but this is actually a great book in terms of understanding the neuroscience, but also the brain-body connection. So how does the body interact with the brain? Um, so that's a great book um, that I'd recommend. Um, another one of uh, one of the few of my books actually from way back um, is Don't Sweat the Small Stuff. That's another great book. It really helps people put things in perspective and the power of now. So making sure that you're really present with whatever you're doing. They're quite powerful books, easy to read. Great. And we'll put all of those in the show notes so people uh, or listeners can uh, go and get those. So great. if you you know look at your journey, you've got a lot of experience in corporate. You've done really well in uh, growing your business. What's one piece of advice you would give someone if – if um, they were about to start their journey of running their own business after leaving corporate? Can I do two? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Excellent. Um, I would say the first thing is be really clear on your vision. So you want to make sure that you've got a vision which philosophically you're really clear on what that is because if you don't know what you're about to create, you're going to have a lot of trouble attracting um, other staff and other clients to work with you. Um, so yeah, my, my first thing is, is, is be very, very clear on your vision. You know, if you look at our website, our vision is help people do more with less. It's very simple. You know, we're avoiding burnout. It's very, very clear. We're not, and, and, and even in terms of the coaches that we want to work with us, we're very clear on the website as to this is what we stand for philosophically. 
and if this is not you then please don't waste our time and energy in approaching us so be very clear in your vision we're very clear with what we're doing doing for clients so they they very much understand where we're able to help them um and then i think the other thing as well is when you're once you're really clear on the vision and starting the business is clients don't just come to you so whatever it is that you're doing you're going to have to get clients or customers or whatever it is that you're doing you need to attract people to you um, so you need to be the one that's absolutely the biggest advocate for your business if you are not the best salesperson for your business don't bother mm, so true yeah, you need to be able to help people understand the value that you can add and how you want to help people and why you want to help people. Um, and when you're really clear on that and you are the best advocate to attract people to you, then you are ready to start a business. But we see most people fail is because they just don't have the mindset and they don't have the conviction. And this is, again, what we help a lot of small businesses with when they first start to actually help them with that. Um, so that you know you you need to hustle you need to hustle resources you need to hustle people who can help you um, you need to be in a position where you can rally the troops even if it's just you yourself and and that's it to start the business you will need a great team of people around you um, that can help you and and in order to help you to attract people to pay for your services. So if you're not the best advocate for that and if you're not comfortable in going out there and adding value to other people and explaining why people should come to you, um, I would suggest highly stay in corporate. Very wise words, excellent advice. And mm -hmm. where can people find out more about you, Vanessa? Absolutely, yes. If you go to our website, uh, www.nextevolutionperformance.com, Dot com. Uh, we've got a lovely amount of information on there, but then obviously if people want to know more, they can contact us directly if there's something that they're specifically interested in. Um, I'm more than happy to chat with people for up to an hour, uh, completely obligation free, completely free of charge. And if I can help them within an hour to give them a couple of tips that they don't, you know, if they never see me again or never see any of us again, and they get a great result out of that, then that's great. We actually want to help people know where to go to with these kind of resources so um, if people would like to contact us again for one hour completely obligation free um, uh, investment free for that first hour um, the other thing that we have on our website is a blog if they go into the insight section um, that's a blog that people can subscribe to we have an article that comes out really just short sharp punchy it's usually based on uh, sort of some insights that we've had in some client meetings obviously we don't mention names or anything like that yes. um, but we work on the basis that if something if one little thing resonated for one of our clients chances are it's going to resonate for other people so we have just a great kit bag of tools that we can use and, and we bring out some of those for um, for some of our insight section and they just come out they're really quick to read which really takes a couple of minutes to get through um, 200 to a maximum 400 words really short sharp and punchy and it's just a great way to keep a lot of our concepts top of mind um, even if people don't necessarily interact with us directly so that's again on the website and go into the insight section excellent brilliant well look you've given us so much value in this short time so you taking that energy that you uh, talked about you've been able to really cram a lot into this uh, short interview so really appreciate it there's uh, all the links will be in the show notes and uh, I'm sure a lot of our listeners will take you up on that free uh, hour that's uh, a brilliant offer so uh, thanks thank you Vanessa for sharing your journey with the BLG listeners today and wish wish you every success in the future that's a pleasure Paul thanks so much for having me thank you for listening to the build live give show if you found this show helpful, please share it with others so we can build businesses, live great lives, and give back to the community. If you would like to join the BLG community, go to our website, www.buildlivegive.com. Until next time, thanks for listening.